a landmark decision in Oklahoma. A judge finds Johnson & Johnson played a substantial role in that state's devastating opioid crisis. Now, for the first time, a pharmaceutical company is being held accountable for what is one of the worst health epidemics in history. And here was that key moment. The opioid crisis is an imminent danger and menace to Oklahomans. My judgment includes findings of fact and conclusions of law that the state met its burden, that the defendants, Janssen and Johnson & Johnson's misleading marketing and promotion of opioids created a nuisance as defined by 50 OS section one, including a finding that those actions compromised the health and safety of thousands of Oklahomans. Specifically, defendants caused an opioid crisis that is evidenced by increased rates of addiction, overdose deaths, and neonatal abstinence syndrome in Oklahoma. This is a temporary public nuisance that can be abated, and the proper remedy for public nuisance is equitable abatement. As I just stated, the opioid crisis has ravaged the state of Oklahoma. It must be abated, abated immediately. For this reason, I am entering an abatement plan that consists of cost totaling $572,102,028 to a... Uh, there you saw the judge joining us now, CNN's Alexander Field, who's at the courthouse in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, Alex, let's start with you. So tell us a little bit more about this decision. A significant number, but that is far less than they were asking. Yeah, less money than they were asking for, but this is really a landmark decision, and this is going to be studied in states across the country. There are dozens of states working to sue Big Pharma for the role that they say that those companies play in fueling the opioid epidemic that has killed hundreds of thousands of people in the last 20 years. Success for the state of Oklahoma, the first state to take a big pharmaceutical company to trial making those allegations. They claimed that Johnson & Johnson had created a public nuisance, one that cost the state billions of dollars and claimed thousands of lives. After eight weeks of testimony, more than 100 witnesses, the judge said that the state had met its burden. Now, Erica, the state was seeking some $17.2 billion worth of abatement that would go toward programs within the state for prevention and treatment, other addiction services too. The judge in the end ordered $572 million, still a big number, not what uh, the state was looking for. Uh, not clear how exactly the judge came up with that number. He mm -hmm. says if more money needs to be allocated to the crisis. It's something that legislators will have to take up. But certainly, this is something that's going to be watched closely as you've got thousands of other claims against pharmaceutical companies now advancing. Absolutely. And, and the judge, so stark in his language there, not only did they meet the burden, but saying their actions compromised the health and safety and contributed to a rise in addiction rates, overdose deaths, and the neonatal issues as well, Sanjay. As you look at all of this, and you has, have covered this so well for so many years, I'm just curious your initial reaction to the finding. Uh, it's, it's, as Alexandra said, it's, it's a big deal. It's reminiscent of big tobacco sort of drawing this cause and effect. The actions in this case by a drug company led or in part led to this, this opioid epidemic. It's the first time, as again, as Alexandra said, is that we've had this sort of ruling. So that, that's a big deal. You know, for, for a long time, these drug companies have been saying, look, we, we weren't to blame here. We were the makers of these drugs, but it was the overprescribing of these drugs. It was uh, the cultural issues, whatever it might be. Uh, that's not really because of us. This ruling obviously suggests that that's not the case, that there was misinformation that was deliberate and it helped fuel this, this opioid epidemic. I, I think also, you know, if you look at the total economic cost, according to the CDC, per year, of the prescription opioid epidemic, it's around $80 billion a year. And there's some 2,000 cities, counties, and states that have filed suit. So where this goes from here, I, I, I don't know, but it's, 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 a, it's gonna make a lot, of, a lot of waves throughout the, the medical world, throughout the entire world. Uh, Elliot, well, we'll let you tackle the, the legal aspect of that. When you look at this, what could be next? Sanjay mentioned all these other cases. There is other pending legislation, and I would imagine that those folks will now be looking specifically at this ruling out of Oklahoma. Right, and it's a remarkable legal theory because I believe this is the first time that a drug company has, fa has you know, been found to have created a public nuisance for putting out a drug that functioned exactly as it was intended. It's not like you know the 1980s and 1990s where you had the IUDs and breast implants that, that hurt people because they, 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 just, they were defective. I mean, these drugs worked the way they intended. They just 
were um, through what the judge says was misleading advertising and, and pushing on, on individuals where you know where there already had been deaths. And so this is a fascinating legal theory, um, and it's certainly th this case in Ohio that was alluded to a little bit earlier. It's something like two thousand. Um, municipalities mm -hmm. have brought lawsuits and those are being consolidated together and they will be looking at this particular legal theory that um, a drug company can put out a product as intended um, but through a desire, frankly, a desire to generate profits and a desire uh, to keep prescribing when in spite of um, evidence of, of individuals being harmed um, can, um, th there you go. One thing, just to point out, a nuance there, uh, Elliot's absolutely right, but also the idea that may have worked as intended, but that, that they, uh, the dangers could still be understated. Right. Uh, that there was knowledge about the risk of addiction mm -hmm. uh, from this and the impact on the brain that caused these overdose deaths. So it's, it's both. It, it worked as intended, but the dangers were known. I think, and, and, that, and that's part of the concern. And, and, and minimized, of course, again. And minimized, uh, yeah, yeah. They just, um, they knew of the harms and just simply chose not to tell doctors, or not to tell the public, or at least as the judge found, uh, that, that more people could be harmed.